Good day everyone. We thank the Lord for the privilege that we could have at this moment to uh, silence ourselves as we meditate upon the Word of God and we come to the Lord in prayer. This is Pastor Baum and uh, it is again our privilege to be together to contemplate upon the Word of God as we uh, study, as we read, as we uh, make this our focus at this moment. Uh, God's word that is given to us. Let me read to you uh, from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I tried the rings or the minds even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege that you have given us to look up to you. And we can do that by studying what you have left us with, your very word. So may that as we contemplate upon what you have for us, that our hearts, our minds would be focused on you alone. And you are going to guide us into all truth and reveal to us your will to encourage us, to make us walk closer to you. Lord, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this uh, time of our uh, meditation from the Word of God, I want us to concentrate on the uh, uh, one of the uh, mysteries in life that only we could know and find its real meaning and answer to these questions if we only go back to what the Word of God would tell us. Now, we will never really understand how we change or how our disciples or the people that working with will change unless we understand who the human being as far as you and i are concerned it's really about as what we read in the word of god about when god would look at us not more on the physical that we could see but really on the heart so when the bible talks about the heart it talks about the inner man the real, real man. The man when you're alone and nobody is looking at you. Because of hypocrisies and because of the many coverings that we could do, camouflage, it's only God that would really see the real condition of our lives, of our hearts. The real us, the inner us that only God could see. So in this study, both in understanding in our walk with God on how God is changing us and also in God is using us to disciple others, to encourage others to walk before the Lord, I hope that this study at this moment will help us. Now, human beings are very strange creatures. Strange in a bad way. Not really more in a, in a way that, you know, we, we look at him, oh, he is so weird, he is so strange. But the word of God would tell us that man is a very strange creature. But not only that he is strange, but also he is beyond comprehension. Now, this is very important. It's because we know that if we are going to study the word of God, and if we are going to apply this in our ministries, or to ourselves, or to our families, or to the people that we're working with, this is very important. Once there was a great man who have examined Christianity. He said something like this, I like your Christ, but I don't like the Christians. Now, based on these sayings, there seems to be 
a disconnect between doctrine and people. Between what we believe and who we are. As far as this man who said this, he have seen in his time the segregation. He could see how people could be divided into white or brown or black. And he had seen this even in Christianity or specifically on Christians. People may call this church, this is a white church, this is a black church, this is an Asian church. So to him, not as a Christian, just observing Christianity and knowing what Christ taught in the Bible. He came to this conclusion that, yes, I like your Christ, but I don't like the Christians. Probably this great, great disconnect has something to do of understanding the human heart. How are we going to really see and how God is going to change that? That the Christians will be transformed to be Christ-like. Rather than the people who call themselves Christians are really no different from what you observe of what the people of the world are doing. Reacting, thinking, behaving. So I think if you are going to understand what is the word of God is teaching about the human heart. We would know how we're going to be a blessing, to encourage, to be a channel of blessing, to be an instrument of change, especially in the lives that are under our care for those of us who are ministering to the people. Now, talking about the understanding of the human heart, of the human or the human beings, there are those who would suggest that we are going to understand human being according to if we understand the basic needs. The basic needs would be food, shelter, clothing, or some may even suggest that there is this need that we need to be liked. We need to be acknowledged. To be appreciated. To be praised. Now for those of you who are working as a manager or who is a boss or a supervisor. This is such a great starting point in how to deal, work with, manage people. So if a manager or a boss or a supervisor Instead of just thinking of making things done, using people, managing people to accomplish project, job, work, whatever. But rather, he would look at meeting the basic needs of those who are working under him. Some would suggest that the people under you will work for you because they know you care for them. So working with you is not really more of a thing that people would resent, but rather it's a thing that the daily work that is assigned to them is lighter. You do it with joy in your heart. It's because you know that somebody is looking at you, concerned about your well-being giving you some, uh, some words of encouragement. It makes the heavy load lighter rather than when you have a boss that all that you could hear is just, you know, shouting, go, 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 go to work. You are not being paid to do this. You are being paid to, to this kind of level of work or productivity. So when we're going to look at that, I think this is very helpful for the managers, for the supervisors, for the bosses, that if you only would know what the man would need and one way or the other meet those needs, these people would work for you. 
But if you're going to translate that into the ministry or Christian work, the church that is giving me food, the church is giving me money or medicine or shelter or clothing, that's my kind of church. The church that is friendly, the church that would pat my back, the church that would appreciate me, the church that would, you know, give me the encouragement that I need, would boost my morale, that is the kind of church I want to have. Now, if we're going look, to look at some of the examples in the Word of God, if we're going to see how the Israelites who came out from the land of Egypt, when God called them to go into the land that is flowing with milk and honey, this was the ministry of, of Moses. This was the working of God when God promised them, I'm going to bring you to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. So really, it's about meeting the basic needs of these people. The food, the water, the shelter, the security, the deliverance. So kind of sort of these people develop that God exists for me. So they grumble, they murmur, they complain to Moses every time they have a need. Because as far as they're concerned, it's all about my basic needs. Moses, give them to me. If not, we'll go back to Egypt or we would stone you to death. Or we will turn our backs from this God who told us to go into the land that is flowing with milk and honey. So the way we look at that, especially for us here in the church age, I think it's not really that very good motivation that our ministry is based on what we could give, especially rice, medicine, money, shelter. Because if we could not give those things to people, how are they going to react? Are they going to remain in our ministries, in our churches? Are they going to continue to serve the Lord because there's already suffering and necessities and poverty? Will they continue? Now listen to the, to the description in the book of Psalms chapter 78 about these people. Psalm 78 and verse 8, it says that they might, that and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that is not, that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Look at in verse 15. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of the great depths. He brought streams in verse 16 also out of the rock. And cause waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. They tempted God in their heart by asking me for their lust. So here we realize that if it is the relationship with God, the ministry that we have, it's just like the ministry of Moses. Giving food to people or water to drink or all the basic needs, realize that even though they had that, they survived, not only they survived, they stayed for as many as 40 years. And yet the word of God is so plain that their hearts are stubborn and rebellious. So really it is possible that all the needs are met. And yet the heart, is still in chains. So here, the prophet Jeremiah is going to give us the description of the human heart. He would say that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And God said, I, the Lord, I know the heart. So here there are four things that we could see here. First of all, that the heart of man is deceitful, misleading. Nagdaraya manuk into. And even the worst that would happen as far as the, uh, deception is concerned, when it would become self-deception. 
I believe those Israelites, they could justify why they are rebelling. Why they are stubborn. Probably some of them may say, we were in Egypt. Why bother to, to follow this Moses? I mean, we could survive with that kind of environment, even as slaves. But why you brought us here? So here we realize that these people, even though God wanted to bring them because of his purpose of this nation, that the Lord Jesus Christ will come to this nation so that the whole, whole, whole world, all families of the earth will be blessed through the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet their sinful hearts would always only long what's good for me. Their hearts were misleading them. That in the midst of their grumbling and murmuring, they didn't see it even that it is evil before the eyes of God. Their hearts were deceiving them. And the second here, it says that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. In other translation, it means, it says, incurably sick. So even though you're going to provide their needs, even though you're going to do this, to do that, just to make them happy, and yet it is incurably sick. There's nothing you could do and I can do that could ever make that heart right. And then it says, who can know it? It's beyond comprehension. There's really no way of anyone of us knowing the complexity, the wretchedness, the wickedness, the blackness of this heart. It is beyond comprehension. But then God says, I know the heart. God knows. God examines. God tests. But also God rewards. So when we have this that is so bleak, a description of what man is, what is then is God's solution to this? Number one, the number one solution to the problem of the sinful heart that we could have been had been in great display, in vivid display, in a very clear display in the Old Testament. This had what the Lord Jesus Christ would do when he came to this world. Listen to one of those who have seen him as a baby. Simeon. This is what Simeon did on chapter 2 verse 34. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken against, yea, a sword shall pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. So the coming Lord Jesus Christ is going to be a heart revealer. And through this, people would know, people would understand of who God is and His holiness. And we could also see our sinfulness when we see God's holiness but only for our study I know that we could discuss so much about that and get so much encouragement and learning but for this study for for this meditation I just want to mention in Hebrews chapter 12 chapter 4 verse 12 for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So this word of God, this is the instrument that God is going to use. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to use this to examine our hearts and through the preaching and the teaching of the word of God, 
we would know God's holiness and we would see and our our sinfulness. We would see the majesty and the beauty of God and we could see our rottenness. And that is the that is the ministry, the work of the word of God. So the word of God is very important. It's not that we could we could we could supply the basic needs of people, but it's really more on the teaching and preaching of the word of God. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So this is the only instrument of God in arresting, in revealing, in opening up, in displaying what really the condition of that heart. And through that, we could find healing, transformation, forgiveness when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that we are sinners, knowing that we are unworthy. And it is only through his blood that we could find cleansing. So when we think of all this, of the ministries that we have, you know, some may think that it's just another strategy some may think it's not just gimmick that we could infuse and, you know, convince people to come to us or be in our ministry. Get real. Nothing ever we could do could change the human heart except the Lord Jesus Christ who is going to reveal the heart. And it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit using the Word of God to expose that heart so that we could come to our senses of who we are or the people that we're working with that realize God you're a holy God I'm not worthy to come your, before your presence heal me forgive me and may the word of God again would become our light would become to expose our innermost beings until we would see our very need of mercy and forgiveness that would only come when we confess our sins to the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in the meditation of your word, we realize its power. We realize its ability to change the human heart. And it's only in the preaching and teaching of the word and the work of the Holy Spirit to renew us to make us understand, to convict our hearts of sin, that we would come face to face with a holy God and with humble hearts begging that, Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, use your word upon our hearts. Continue, Lord, to guide us, both for our sanctification and also in helping and leading others in their walk with you. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.